Today I'm talking with Dr Rod Pattenden, artist, minister, writer, academic, curator, the driver behind many creative and social justice initiatives, and he's about to embark on a new life journey. Good morning, Rod. You're newly retired as the pastor for the Adam Stan Uniting Church, where you left an incredible legacy of arts behind you during your time there. You're widely travelled, you're an educator, You've made your mark in so many ways. But what came first, ministry or arts? Oh, definitely art. So my first tertiary training was uh, at uh, the National Art School in Darlinghurst. So I spent four years uh, at art school in the period that we would call splash and dribble. It was just experiential, enjoying the material of making art. And of course that doesn't suit you for anything other than of course, working with ideas and creativity and spirituality. So uh, I was in the generation that uh, uh, produced Mental As Anything, the, the, the beautiful pop group and uh, Mambo Graphics, uh, that group of people. They, they all went on to become famous doing t-shirts and music, um, not necessarily art. So it was a very experimental and exciting time to uh to be uh, exploring yeah the meaning and, and excitement of, uh, of mark making and and working with color and that led you to explore the spirituality side of art you chose the path of ministry your first posting was at paddington the creative heart of sydney where for 17 years you ran the markets opened up the chapel space for arts events and exhibitions started the world music cafe developed arts and justice programs and much more. And it was a period that wasn't without its challenges. It was a wonderful opportunity to explore the role of this public space, because uh, the church is not just about narrow religious ideas, but about uh, giving people permission to think wider and reflect on life. So we were able to strengthen that, that kind of a profile in, in the eastern part of the city of Sydney. It became quite influential, and, um, got recognition for all sorts of creative things. Because church hasn't always been that way. That was pretty... Progressive. It was very progressive because Sydney particularly, most churches are very, very conservative and we're exploring a more open-ended way of thinking and, and responding, of which of course the arts are such a gift about feeling and belonging and expressiveness rather than correct. So after Paddington, you then spent 10 years with Macquarie University. You were heavily involved in the Blake Prize. You curated several significant art exhibits. You co-founded Interplay headed a team of church folk in the 99 Sydney Mardi Gras, and then got a posting to Newcastle. What was the initial response? There is a, a deep sense of respect for, for diversity. Uh, we were very involved in the debate around same-sex marriage, and um, it was a surprise to me that Newcastle voted over 75%, and I think that's an expression of a, a deep-seated respect for diversity, which is a great value to have. So Adamstown invited me with a sense that I hear as a minister who will help take the arts program on. When I arrived, there was a sense that, yes, this is the direction for the future. We are going to support this person and receive their gifts and create a new opportunity. It's been interesting that it's been marked every year with changes and ongoing changes. It's never settled down. It's a community that is open to the future. How has your ministry influenced or affected your art? The connection for me between spirituality and art or creativity is that art gives you a very embodied, enfleshed, visual way of playing with your life. Like life and art, life and art. And I often, when I talk in church, I would talk more about the church being like a studio. Come in, bring your stuff, unpack it, play around a little bit, make a few mistakes. Learning to make mistakes is a wonderful way of adventuring yourself in terms of creativity. So it's been a more permissive, if I can use that word, sense that, that in a studio, you get to deal with stuff and pull it apart and make a mess. Otherwise, how do you put it back together again in, in a new kind of way that's more useful? Often we're using ideas and forms and traditions that have worked in the past. Where else do you find a place in your life in a social setting where you can put things back together again that's more relevant, more grounded, more now? Art uh, pulls away the bullshit, the kind of masks you use and you, you drop into a, a deeper place of self-knowing and integrity. Well, you and your art are quite unique, Rod. How would you describe your style? 
So I think my work uh, is figurative. You can see references to a, a certain place, but the colors are intense, the forms are dynamic, and, and I think I'm playing in that space between abstraction, color, and, and this sense of place. So it's a place of delight, finding, losing yourself, that kind of visual language. And it hasn't got any other huge metaphysical theological observations around it except that intense moment of looking, this absolute delight of having eyes to see and to unsee and to see again. Place does that for you. Hmm. So uh, I've been looking at places like uh, Newcastle, Nobby's Head, uh, some work I'd done previously visiting Central Australia, and then most of the works now are about Golden Gully at Hill End, which is this sort of mini canyon uh, made of alluvial yellow clay, which is the tailings off the original gold rush in the 1870s, and it's a, it's a 12 metres or so, 15 metres high little gully, um, not a huge scale, but it's been a eroded with such dynamic forms and it's got this white yellow clay which reflects the sun and it's quite a beautiful poetic place but a tragic place because quite a number of people have lost their lives digging down into the into the clay and it's collapsed on them and they've died so it's a place of great beauty but a place where people are looking for gold for power for money uh, so it's got they've got lots of layers as a as a place Family is important to you. In fact, you co-create with your mother and sister sometimes. Tell us about that. So within my work in the church, I've had the opportunity to be creative and to make artistic products. And I've had great benefit working with my, my mum and my sister. And I'm giving people something to look at on Sunday. So here is a, a stole that I've made and uh, probably on the theme of the spirit. So it's got this lick of gorgeous red and uh, yellow on a field of otherwise blue. So I painted this and then my sister, Sandra, has uh, very generously quilted it, put it on a backing, and then uh, she's effectively puffed up each of these colored sections. So it just has that nice three-dimensional feel. So it's been really wonderful working with her. Again, it's a hand-painted stole. It's on the theme of water and the marks just gradually become more turbulent. So I think I have about 40, 30 to 40 of these. Uh, now I don't know what to do with them now, but um, they've been a one. And then this is one my mum made, a birthday present, and you know, a traditional form of placing material on, patching, and, and then she's done a little flowers that are all the fabrics drawn together. And there are even a couple of little creatures here. So yeah, it's been a nice way for my mother and my sister to, to collaborate together and it's been a great place to be creative and to connect art and spirituality. Arts and ministry is what you do, but who is Rod Pattenden? Can you separate the two? I think basically I'm a kind of shy, not insecure person. I think my involvement in the arts has given me a way of being present. It wakes me up, it makes me physically present, painting and drawing, and I'm also doing a, I do a little bit of theatre stuff as well. I'm able to bump up into a bigger body and, and try out things. So. Often in my life I experience that introvert, extrovert, doing things quietly to myself. And then, well, I'm out there doing something, I'm on television, I'm in front of a crowd, and I'm the same person, but I notice that little person, big person kind of experience, that dialogue between private and public, uh, small and big, living your life to yourself or living your life in community, and then being willing to take risks and, and make change. Rod, you're a social person. You and your partner love to entertain and you're involved with Interplay to help your creativity and relaxation. But now that you've retired, what are you going to do with all your spare time? I don't imagine I, I will have any free time. You know, being a creative person, you just pick up projects like, oh, well, I think that's a good idea. And I've just said yes to uh, an involvement with the Lighthouse Arts Centre. Nobby's uh, Lighthouse is developed as uh, spaces for artists to work. So I'll be down there through the chill of winter, one day a week for six weeks. So I'll be doing drawing and researching that whole very windy, swept, cold, bleak cliff line with the ocean. So I expect that, you know, even during that time, there'll be uh, the beginnings of another set of works that deal with the Newcastle landscape. But I'm also writing and finishing up a couple of uh, book chapters for various books.